we're going to start how value is defined and tracked with GitLab. So GitLab value stream management focuses on increasing the flow of business value from customer requests to customer delivery. Its systemic approach is to measuring and improving flow, helps organizations shorten that time to market, increase their throughput, and improve product quality and optimize for business outcomes uh, while only needing one single application. So we start with value stream analytics, which is built into GitLab and provides the ability to measure that time spent to go from an idea to production for each of your projects and overall as an organization. So think that that parent group level or within a specific subgroup team. Value stream analytics displays the time spent in each stage, defining the process. Uh, VSA is useful in order to quickly determine the velocity of, of a given team or product or project and it points to bottlenecks in the development process, which may help enable management to cover triage and identify the root cause of slowdowns in the software development lifecycle. So uh, here we're viewing the live dashboard of the uh, at GitLab's actual product value stream. We mentioned gitlab.org before, and this is the dashboard that allows us to use our own tool analytics to build a stronger GitLab product. The seven base stages uh, in this case um, that are considered a, a sample process flow or, or actually a you know, default um, for someone that's using value stream analytics come across as uh, you have issue, plan, code, test, review, and staging. And QA is just in here. Uh, it looks like we someone added that in an example. Um, let's kick over to default only VSA. And now we see that the default stages are present. So tracking is built into GitLab and collecting and showing data from across the software development lifecycle. Uh, these stages come out of the box as the default stages uh, and they're free and don't require customization to get immediate value. In addition to these default stages, we do offer the ability to have extensive customization with those stages that are best suited for your organization. So what I mean by that, if we take a look at here, I can go in and I can click, I can click on plan stage. Uh, I'm gonna click over to this tab real quick and we already have a snapshot into what the plan team is doing and uh, oh, we don't actually have a snapshot so now I'll click into it once it loads here now we have a snapshot into what the plan team's done and they've gone in and they've customized uh, that flow to align to what they see fit uh, best fit for their uh, their organization their subgroup uh, within the greater gitlab.org and they have several different uh, stages here um, we can see that they have validation backlog, problem validation, design, solution validation, plan back down, and a couple more. So going back to our default value stream analytics, um, just to give a, a quick, uh, simple example, um, as we look at uh, this, this workflow up here, so a, a fictional workflow of a single cycle that maybe happens in a single day, uh, passing through um, all of these uh, six stages here. Uh, so if um, a stage doesn't have a start and a stop mark, it isn't measured and hence it isn't calculated in the medium time. So it's assumed that um, when milestones are created and CI for testing and setting environments is configured. So let's take a look at issue here. It's created at 9 a.m. Um, this is the start of the issue, issue stage and then an issue is added to a milestone at a 11 a.m. So that's now the stop of the issue stage and the start of the plan stage. So the start working on the developer starts working on the issue, creates a branch locally, and makes one commit at noon. Make a second commit to the branch that mentions the issue number at 12.30 p.m. And that's the stop of the plan stage and now the start of the code stage. Push a branch and create a merge request that contains the issue closing pattern. So a merge request uh, that has a pattern that will close the issue in its description at 2 p.m. And this is the stop of the code stage and the start of the test and review stage. The CI starts running your test scripts defined in a .gitlab CI YAML file and takes five minutes. And so now this is the stop of the test stage. Right, and then the merge request is merged at 7 p.m. And so this is now uh, the stop of um, the review stage. Next, the merge request is merged um, and a deployment to the production environment starts and finishes at 7.30 p.m. So this is now the stop 
of the staging uh, stage. So from the previous example, we see that the time used for each stage is the issue uh, took two hours from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Plan took one hour from 11 a.m. to uh, 12 p.m. And then code took two hours from uh, 2 to 4 p.m. Testing only took five minutes. And then review took five hours from uh, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then staging went from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. as that uh, merge request was pushed into production. So that's just a, a sample um, flow, uh, example flow of how this might be used. Uh, and if we look at some of the, the metrics we can pull from as uh, flows like this that we built out for our teams, uh, we can look at a lead time, which is this is a medium time from that issue created to that issue being closed. So uh, currently if we look at the you know default BSA here, we see it's about two weeks from the issue being created uh, to being closed. Uh, let's take a look at the plan stage. Um, and we can also see there that uh, the lead time is similar in nature. Uh, looking at the cycle time, we can see that this is a medium time from the issue being first, uh, the, from issue having a merge request first created to that issue being closed. And so uh, we may look at lead time as an issue is created. Um, the cycle time is only around one day. So uh, in particular, we may look at that, um, that the issue is created and it's picked up 13 days later, and then that first merge, merge request is made, and then um, over the course of that day, uh, it moves to the different stages, and then it's merged and pushed out to production, so it's less than one day cycle time from the beginning of that first merge request to the issue being closed. When we look at deployment frequency, uh, this is something that is in line with DOOR metrics. It's, uh, one of the four that we currently have on the value stream analytics. There's a second one um, that will be coming uh, soon. And that second one is the uh, lead time. And that metric will soon be uh, shown here uh, on value stream analytics. Now let's show you how someone can create a value stream uh, workflow that's uh, aligned to their organization. What we can do is go into here. We can see the different ones that have already been created and we want to create a new value stream. So GitLab gives you a couple options where you can create from a default template. So we want to say test default. Ooh. We have this here and then you can see there's different stages that, that have the defaults that we just went through earlier. Um, what I do is I have the ability, okay, maybe I don't like um, stage two. I can hide that and that disappears. If I want, uh, you know, review to be above test, I can move that around. And then down here, I can add another stage that uh, maybe I want to add my own that uh, aligns into the default workflow that goes there. Um, you have a select a start event. So we have over 100 different combinations of uh, start events that you can use for your organization um, by choosing uh, one of those that gives you an end event that aligns with that start event. And this is adjusted depending on you know the different start events that you have and those will be closely aligned. If we do not want to use the, the, the default um, value stream, we can go create from no template. And this is where we can have uh, another um, stage that we create from scratch. Uh, maybe we don't need that guide from the default. We already have in mind what we're going to use for our, or our, our organization. So we start creating stage one, um, stage two, stage three, and we can create from scratch using this choice. If we go look into, um, let's say in this case, we'll go over here to what the plan team's done, we can edit that. Um, we can see different uh, start event labels that have been organized based on their start events. So the plan team has gone in and they've, they've agreed upon naming conventions for labels of how they organize. Maybe they're using these on their issue boards to have visibility into um, where that, uh, that issue is on the on their uh, as part of their sprint um, and so here we have different event labels that is being organized uh, based on stages and so you have that choice once you've built out the naming conventions of labels that your organizations agreed upon you can do that using uh, these uh, start event labels to organize your stages if we dive into these different stages here where i want to look at something specific so maybe Let's take a look at uh, solution validation. 
I click on solution validation, it's going to give me a running list of the issues that are uh, correlated uh, with solution validation. They're in that stage now. Um, and if I want to uh, take a look at, hey, what's, what's been in this stage the longest amount of time? I can do that here. I can dive into that issue. Um, I can see that, um, you know, here's a description. This is the issue has been built out. And then there's been some collaboration that's been happening around it. And I can read into that if I want to see where are they at, maybe they're stuck somewhere, or what decision hasn't been made. Um, you can see that there's a lot of uh, coordination around um, setting the appropriate labels. They have uh, the milestone, the next release 14.2 that's expected. And I can go in and if any problems even solving needs to be happen, I can do so there. If not, I can just understand better why it's taken uh, three days to, uh, it's the, the amount of time spent, it's been 13 days in this particular stage. Going back to the overview view, um, I also have a couple different things that, uh, a couple different graphs that I can see here, days to completion. So this is the average time spent uh, in the selected stage for the items uh, that were completed on each date, limited to the last 50, uh, 500 items. I can organize this by stages. If I only want to see a particular stage, I can do so here, or a group of particular stages, I can do that. Otherwise, I have a graph here um, that is going to identify uh, average day to completion. Um, based on uh, that time frame. Time frames can be adjusted up here. Right now I'm looking at the last month. If I want to do a comparison of maybe the month before that, we'll click on this. We can see that the certain amount of days are selected. That's 65 days. Let's just move this back to, hey, I want to see what happened for the previous 30 days. And I'll click on here, 30 day, sorry, 32 days. And then now it's going to adjust a days to completion there. And I can do a comparison of uh, where we are currently if we're improving and um, if we are uh, if we're not so task by type uh, in a, order to become efficient we need to understand what type of work our team does how much of it and how quickly it goes through so pms have difficult time uh, to optimize between features bugs technical debt and security issues and usually there's no easy way to communicate trade-offs to management and moreover they don't know how much of that work is stuck in each stage and so this gives us uh, visibility into that date and uh, the type of uh, task that is being worked on. Uh, maybe it is a, a backend issue or a QA issue. I can have visibility into uh, the quantity and frequency uh, based on that day and how many uh, are in progress on that current day and gives me kind of a trend graph over time to understand uh, those different um, specific uh, labels that associate with with uh, however we decided to organize our group. So earlier I quickly went over there, but I just kind of want to reference it here. Uh, we have this uh, CICD section. This is something where um, and uh, aligned with our value stream, we're building out uh, door metrics. Uh, we have deployment frequency that is available here. Um, this shows us a trend graph of uh, the number of deployments over a certain amount of time. Um, we can look at the last week, month, and last 90 days. And then as well, we can see that lead time uh, with those uh, similar time frames. If I go back to the value stream, this is just showing that um, currently we have the deployment frequency coming in through as a metric right here. And soon that lead time will also uh, be coming through as a, uh, a metric as well. And to wrap up this uh, the value stream, a quick overview, demo overview here, I want to go into DevOps adoption. Uh, DevOps adoption, uh, this is something uh, which groups in your organization are, you, uh, it kind of showcases which groups in your organization are using the most essential features of GitLab. And so it's broken down um, with an overview and obviously just kind of showing the different stages. So you have dev, sec, and ops here. Um, this is an overview showing everything that's been adopted, but if I were to go into dev, it's going to break that down by group. It's going to show approvals, code owners, issues, and merge requests, who's using them, and what groups are using them. Uh, same thing with second ops. I can see uh, DAS, SAS, and scanning, and then ops is going to give me deployments, pipelines, and runners. And so if I want to see, in this case, which of my groups, uh, those subgroups that roll up to gitlab.org, are using um, these particular capabilities of uh, the GitLab product. 
Um, I could take a look at that so I could see you know, this group here is using deploy uh, deploys, but uh, this group is not. And uh, these groups are all using pipelines, the ones beneath them are not. And so it gives me a great shot to verify whether you know, you're getting the return on investment that you expect from GitLab. Um, you can identify those specific groups that are lagging in their adoption of GitLab so you can help them along in their DevOps journey. And you can find the groups that have adopted certain features and can provide guidance to other groups on how to use those features.